we're going to go and see the fairy chimneys. They were caused by a period of volcanic eruptions about 12 million years ago. It was a long session, a couple of million years, the volcanoes kept erupting. The rock that got laid down was called tuff. Then with ice and water erosion, the softer rock got whittled away until it formed castle-like structures, which we call fairy chimneys, but the locals do call them castles. And it's been like the seeing the whales of Magdalena Bay, seeing the fairy chimneys by hot air balloon has been on my bucket list for a good few years now. So this is exciting that we get to do it, but ah, nerve-wracking. But even just seeing the others going in the distance and the sun rising, the strange landscape, it's like another planet again, it's just beautiful. chimneys people actually I kind of want to say burrow into them not only are some of them just beautiful structures they actually carve into them and create cave hotels but cave homes and everything And the even flight like this is I mean sort of Mongolfier brothers 1700s I know it goes back slightly further than that if you want to be pedantic but <laughs> just the idea with just using hot air as just using fire to fly When we flew in last night, it was dark. I didn't like that one. So, we didn't really get an impression, apart from the fact that a lot of the country seems to be dark, with just little patches of light here and there, like in rocks. So to actually our first impression, because... Butterfly balloons picked us up while it was still dark. <laughs> so our first actual impression of Turkey. Is this? This looks incredibly ancient, which 12 million years in fact. It's not as old as what I find on the Isle of Wight, and yet Look at it. And then that's what erosion does in quite a short space of time, geologically speaking, in my opinion. But it looks incredibly ancient. You don't know which way to look because <laughs> it's all so beautiful. I don't know. There's a nice thing about how calm it feels to travel this way though, you've got time. <laughs>
23 minutes to you for you. That's brilliant. Although we'd arrived the night before by plane, the first view of Cappadocia with the sun up felt like we'd arrived by hot air balloon. And like the wizard in Frank L. Baum's books, we had arrived in a magic land very different from home. <laughs> Before we could begin to explore the area, however, we had to help put the balloon away. It's rude to walk on it. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting a bit static now. <laughs> Are you static now? I don't know. <laughs> then it was time to properly celebrate our arrival. Our main exploration would begin not on the ground, however, but underneath. What is it that our guide in Mexico said? Um, go slowly live long time? Yeah. Thank piano, you. piano, vivano, lontano. <laughs> I liked him, he was cool. So this is Derencuyu Underground City, designed as a place where we could go and live to escape from uh, war and everything else. It, was, it is a whole city built underground, it goes eight floors deep. And we have been warned it can get a little bit claustrophobic. No. In fact, Flick is quite pleased at this point in time. It doesn't appear to be busy. It doesn't help that I am also taller than average for a girl and certainly taller than Greggy. So I really have to duck. The underground world first made me think of Morlocks from H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Which I think was our best comparison, although we made a few others. You wouldn't be entirely surprised to find a mine tour down here. Oh, yes I would. Minotaurs have big shoulders. A little minotaur. A baby minotaur. This is kind of tomb-like. Yeah. Oh, be it. As we went deeper, Felicity began to hear what she had feared. A crowd. That claustrophobia thing? I think it is people, I can't. In a small space with lots of people. Imagine all of the above ground your home is being invaded and attacked. And you have to live down here for a With, I can't remember, like 3,000 for one, something ridiculous, a huge amount for another. Why do you have been trapped that many? Yeah. You want to do another two of these today? Hot air balloons, no problem. ATVs, mm, but fun. Claustrophobia is my biggest. But the tunnels themselves get anxiety. The tunnels with crowds, so I can't move, I can't stand, I can't go forward, I can't go back. That to me is where your heart goes so fast you feel like it's going to do something silly and I get like, I can't swallow. But, you know, you got to face these things sometimes. I'd have been sorry to miss this one. So yeah, I'm happy to do another one. I just... I hope we do better at avoiding the big crowds on the next one. I also, you bent over double to get at these things. I don't want to be that close to somebody else's bottom. Come on, Eddie. Come on. At the record show, I asked if we were doing another two. She said she's happy to do another one. We tried to find tunnels to take us away from the crowds. Although Greg took this too far for me. You sure? Yeah. Just show you some light on it. Well, Flick's waiting up the other end of this tunnel, and I don't blame her. 
it's got a lot smaller down here. I don't think this is the route. And the sign says graves and but I mean just down there. If I can get some light on it. And I'll be honest. Sight of the outside if we just turn the camera around. The tunnel just disappears into darkness. It doesn't really help that there's a grave in here as well. I think it's time for me to get back to Flick. A bit creepy. It turns out I didn't need to worry about Felicity being alone. We continued our search for crowd free tunnels. How short are these people? Just a little room. That's it, just a It's a cupboard. They're coming, Reggie, quick. Did you go through that tiny hole? I did. Ooh, what's in there? Okay. Have you got a light? Come on, you can't see a little hole in the ceiling and not think that Flicky wants to know what's in there. <laughs> Lady Felicity may have regretted that comment a few minutes later. Can you shine your light in that tunnel? I don't want you to go if so it's not safe, Reggie. Okay, I won't go if it's not safe. Reggie? Don't bash your head. Be careful there's not randomly a hole in the floor. You okay? You used to make me nervous, Rick. I've kind of got to the end of this little tunnel that I decided to go out and explore, and there's another whole entrance to the huge cage, this cave system there. I don't have enough light, so I'm gonna head back along the tunnel, and I'll be honest right now, I'm feeling a claustrophobia a little bit as well. But I can hear him chatting to himself, so calm down, Ski. <laughs> What did you find? <clears throat> oh, don't fall down the stairs. It's a long time and I got to the end and I could have leapt down into something like this and carried on. Except then... It's not barricaded off. No. But you get hopelessly lost. You wouldn't know which... Could you get out of here without the lights and... Probably not. It would take me a few years trying, probably. No, as you mentioned, catacombs. Would I have hated it? By this point, we were both ready to get to the surface and fresh air. How does that feel? <sighs> the sun! At least until we got to Kamakli, where we wanted to get more into the history. So we saw that big mall. See that wheel rolling on the outside? Get a lot in England as well. But they just have to... Where did they get the grain? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you store? I suppose grain must last longer than flour. So. As Greg found himself struggling, we decided to get a guide to help us understand the city better. There is an art to reading these cities, these small holes, for example, are from oil candles, the walls blackened by the smoke. Below are troughs for the animals, kept on the first floor where access was easy, and hitching points can still be found in the walls. Our guide explained how each family's sleeping quarters would have been sealed with wooden doors, and then went on to discuss the crucial problem in an underground city. What about bathroom? That's the question. The big problem, toilet. Mm. There is no drainage system. They use chamber pots, mm. clay pots. People accumulated humans waste and they took it out. As we continued through the city. Yeah. Lois tunnel, let's go. 
we learn to recognize wineries for pressing and storage, and large stone doors to keep out invaders, or delay them at least. Bedrooms. Yeah, and I like high ceilings. This is perfect for you. Big <laughs> shot. <laughs> I can see there's like an archway into the next one along. Like dog legs room. Yeah. <laughs> I have this room. This one. <laughs> and even ventilation shafts complete with carved climbing holes for scouts to look out of the top. So far we had only seen the most famous two out of 36 underground cities currently found. Some of these may have been begun as far back as the 8th century BC and there are records of them being used to hide in wartime as recently as 1909. And throughout these years, they were used to hide and seek refuge from numerous attacking and persecuting forces. How long they might have spent down here at the longest is unknown, but as we prepared to enter our third city that day, Lady Felicity was glad that our time in them was nearing an end. See, I got this now, I'm not scared at all, until the coach appeared. Oskanak was a much smaller city, which made people harder to escape. She chose down. She chose down. Was that wrong? Too late now. Ooh. No, reverse. Reverse, reverse. They got a big door. We now know they yeah, it is a big door. Roly poly doors with sticks. So they put their sticks under there. And force it into place. There's a stick when you need one. Eventually, we found a quieter spot. This is not made for human-sized people. <laughs> At least until we decided to test the acoustics. Oh, oh, oh. It's like Berlin. Da, 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 da. I then realised Felicity may have been underground too long and that it was time for us to return to the surface. You go first, see so can come to you. <laughs> <laughs> to help get her some fresh air, I'd arrange to see the ferry chimneys at high speed on all-terrain vehicles. which, as I don't drive, was a little challenging. Like I say, I don't mind driving one, but I might be really slow for you, where if you want to go there. Maybe, maybe no, slow, slow, maybe later, later. Yeah, let's try it, yeah. As suggested, we started off slowly. Okay. So here we are in Sword Valley. We've just ridden on the ATVs to get here. Yeah, it's about... 200 yards, taking us about three hours. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> For someone that can't ride a bike, that's never She's been in the She's done brilliantly. Car. She wasn't sure she was going to have a go. They gave her a little test ride around the test track. And Which then took me that an she's hour. done it. Yeah, we're about to go on something a bit more, a bit more adventurous. Having got the hang of the speed, we set off to explore the fairy chimneys, which we'd seen from above in the balloons. Right over there we got Goreme, which is where we started from, that's where we're staying, that's where we picked up the ATVs. Going around through Sword Valley over there, around the Rose Valley over there, where we just were a few minutes ago. That's where we stopped off and we've carried all the way around up here. Well, um, we're here for the culture and the sites of historical significance, of course. He's here to go down the really big hills. Actually, I would say it's the other way around. I think we did the ATVs for Plane. the adventure, the thrill, and the playing. But I would say that the ATVs that we've done for playing, I mean, most of them you just wanted to stop and look, and look right? at the hill. It's, it's just beautiful. incredible.
The next morning, we slowed things down. Today we are visiting the Hilara Valley, which I think is how we're pronouncing it. Ah. I'm a bit worried that the man we've just met at the top of the stairs doesn't look particularly unfit and he looked like he might be about to have a heart attack. Look, that's a lot of stairs. Shouldn't this be where you give us some of the history on the area? The Ilhara Valley had a focus on monastery life between the 4th and 13th century. Along with around 4,000 cave dwellings in the valley, there are also a hundred cave churches, like this one. Oh, they've got big spiders in here. And look at these, look, they all have little, on this side, those little shelves and things. The whole place is made in the shape of a cross. Having tested the echo in the valley, we decided to explore some of the dwellings. Be careful. Don't come further, you make me nervous. The Melendez River once helped carve out this valley and now flows through its centre. While well, we're here in the beautiful Elara Valley next to beautiful little stream, bit of fresh water and I have my Keep the Seas plastic free t-shirt on. Just a little sort of commercial break from the main video because we're going to ask you two favours if you are enjoying this video. Favour number one, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. But favour number two, do us a big favour, head over to curiousaquatica.com forward slash fundraising if you would like to help us in our mission to save the world's oceans and you're enjoying this video enough that you'd like to donate a couple of pounds towards our current marine charity. That's it, back to the travelling. We set off back towards Greme for a closer look at the fairy chimneys. We are in the Zell Valley Open Museum. It looks like there's something up there. The museum spans three valleys of cave homes in the rock walls and inside fairy chimneys, some of which were inhabited as recently as 1952. Go on in, you'll probably see me from above. So I'm out on the terrace. Kind of feels like they've built a wall there to hold the cliff up. <laughs> it's funny that it is replicated underground. They have tried underground to recreate exactly what they've got naturally in the caves. In fact, we recognised most of the elements we had learned about in Kamakli, such as wineries. Pressing space in the... In the hole for the wine to drain to be collected. Oh! Right down there. Get up there. It does say they're not responsible for any accidents caused by deviating from their route. Uh-huh. Is it a slide and you should go wee? Just imagine people running all over this. They did have a different feel to the underground cities. This was a place where, relatively recently, everyday lives had been lived. Now it lay silent. Silence was not the order of the day at the Goreme Open Air Museum, however. It's crowds, it's fences. Uh, the really sad thing about this is that for some people this will be the fairy chimney cities of Cappadocia. Yeah, I can't do this. The other ones we've seen, not that many people. You can get into all of the caves. It's so different to this. This is people everywhere, everything closed off. They've. <sighs> it's all fake floors and head beams, and you're not experiencing anything except tourists. And we've not seen this number of people at any of the other sites and I think that speaks volumes. This is the one that everyone comes to. This is the safe tourist option. 
grateful this option exists because it means the others stay nice for the people that can be bothered to go a bit far out of their way that actually want to climb and want to experience what it once was rather than those that just want to be picked up on a coach dropped off here look around take a photo and leave so i'm glad that this exists but it's not what i want if you want to, to come to month. if you want to come to cappadocia if you want to come to Gareme, do the Gareme open air museum do it maybe your first morning here and then because it's be great, you come here your first morning, you'll get your first look around and then experience what it's really like. Don't make this the only place you visit. We asked for experiences, and Lady Felicity had already faced her claustrophobia and her first attempt at driving. It was now Greg's turn to leave his comfort zone, as he is not a man who is at home on horseback. I should have been warned when mine was the only horse which needed to be led off the ranch. We made it to the end of the road before Caramello decided to stop for the first time. Come on. Come on. Come on. And the second time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Caramel. Come on. And the, you get the idea. Come on. Caramel. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. I know, I know. I'm sorry they lumbered you with me. Don't worry about the doggy. Don't worry about the doggy. In general, Greg and Caramello seem to have a complicated relationship. Get the impression I don't quite look like John Wayne. Hey, 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 hey. Um, I might be walking like him later. We may or may not be going left. Really depends what sort of mood she's in. I will. Come on, I see. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Caramello. Come on. 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 Go on. Caramello. Come on. Go on. Come on. Water canal. Go on. Look, that's that's not gonna work, Caramel. <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> the trouble is, I've got a horrible feeling Caramel is just like me. Will work just as hard as she wants to work yeah. and doesn't like being told what to do. <laughs> come on, no, come on, we're still going. Go on, come on, come on, come on, Caramello. Although the ride had started off comically, things were about to take a more serious turn. Oh boy, come on. Oh boy, okay, yep. Oh, go on. Yeah. You all right, Flickle? No. <laughs> you coming? Yeah. You're terrified? Yeah. Good. Glad it's not just me. Shh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Lean into it. I don't want to. Go on. Lean into it. Woo! Come on. Go on. Go on, Karen. Go on, Karen. Go on, Karen. You alright, wife? Yeah. I scared my horse. <laughs> <laughs> she was so sorry. Go on, Karen. Huh? Can we say if you really want to. If you want. Do you want to? Oh, boy. Whoa, whoa. You alright? Yeah, me too. Go on, Caramel. It is that thing again, though. I'm actually, I was happier with Don't look left. Holy. Ah, oh, dear. That's okay, we're out of that bit. I am. I don't. I don't think I'm sweating. I think I've broken out in 
cold beer. That's it, carefully does it. Watch out for that. Oh, blooming neck. Did you notice part of the path there was missing? Not being used to horses at the best of times, Ooh. and having had a strained relationship with Caramello Ooh. so far, this ride was genuinely Ooh. one of the scariest moments Ooh. of my life. Ooh. Oh. Shh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're fine. It's just a little valley. Look at that view. Okay. Easy does it. It's alright, it's not as bad as it looks this bit. Excuse Yeah, me too. Why did you choose an easy little one? What? A Shetland pony? <laughs> or you mean a horse ride? Because why this is what our videos are yep but that's part of the cost your little tours are the ones that go to your M open air museum and stop there for this view i'm afraid i think we have to be a little bit terrified and i'll be honest with you i am absolutely Okay, just to warn you, if you see a little poo come out the back... <laughs> Might not be the horse. Come on. Come on, this is not the place to be. Okay, lean right back, Karen. Lean right back, Karen. No, Karen, you keep walking forward. <laughs> lean right back, Flicky. <laughs> I'm trying. Good, good. You doing all right? <clears throat> you okay? Oh, I've suddenly become highly religious. <laughs> Where's that eye when you need it? You're good? Can't talk. We pulled into a small rest stop, only to find we were only halfway through the ride. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely, I don't know how long we've been. I want to know how long we've been. I want to know how long we've got to go. Oh God, it's two hours long. It is. I hope we've been at least an hour. <laughs> it feels like we've been three lifetimes. Um, the view Vertical are gorgeous, up, vertical but... down, we've ridden, um, Flick's ridden four times, I think I've ridden three. But that's been on guided, quite calm trails. If you saw the Mexico video, it was a lovely ride through this flat, one little slope down. <laughs> this is near vertical up and down. This, this is, is a roller coaster. Terrifying. <laughs> okay, so... Greggy is so scared he's actually gone to sit down so his legs can stop shaking. We're in the rest stop. It's very civilised. We've got a church up there to go and look at, but his legs aren't working enough for steps right now. And they were not the sort of steps to attempt with shaky legs. Not looking forward to the ride back down. We're trying to ask him, is it steep or is it pretty flat? and don't understand each other. Oh no, he's getting our horses ready. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Caramel, that wasn't fair, was it? Whoa, Caramel. Back on Caramello, we were still working on our relationship. Whoa, shh, 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 okay, shh, 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 shh. Then, whether it was the amazing views or just Stockholm Syndrome, something magical happened. I've grown to like you, Caramel. You're a very sensible horse. Caramello and I finally understood each other. I like this. Now we got it. This is more like it. And while I may never be one of nature's horse riders, I felt more comfortable. Oh, that was unnecessary. <laughs> Mostly. Wow. Go on. Yep. Yep. Please just keep going straight. 
the, he used to just keep going straight down <laughs> It was the moment when we went over that little bridge up there and just as we were halfway across she just kind of looks over the edge just to say you know I could jump if I wanted <laughs> finally Greg got to be John Wayne as we rode off into the sunset she's done so well for you today thank you very much thank you well it's early morning here in Gareme and we are about to leave the Grim River Hotel and set off on the next phase of our adventure. Behind me in the darkness, in about half an hour time, the whole thing will fill up once again with hot air balloons. As the balloons took to the air again, so did we. Only we were on a plane bound for Denizli. Okay, well, I'll be honest, <laughs> there was a moment when we walked in the front door and it was a building site that I thought would really culture this one up. There's a bathroom here. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what does a good bathroom have in a hotel? If I go to a hotel, what is the most important thing? Is it the power shower? That's not the most important thing, is it? You're, you're thinking, now. is it that we have a sink or a real toilet? No, that's not it. We got both of those. No, you always think, don't you? When you go and check into your hotel, you think, ah, oh, but what if I'm on the toilet and I need to phone reception? I love oh no, I'm out of toilet roll. They're <laughs> called <call> reception. Towels. <laughs> and slippers. Don't worry, that towel and those slippers is not going to work, okay? When Greg had figured out the towels and found the front of the hotel, we set off to see Hieropolis and the cotton castles. Of course, when I say C... So this is the southern Byzantine gate. As we entered the gate, we found the ancient city shrouded in mist. Now, my assumption is that this mist is because of the thermal pools we're going to find. Don't touch it if it's going to be hot, hot. It's not, but it's warm. While the ruins played hide and seek in the mist, Lady Felicity was busy filming what she could see. So here we are in the Greek amphitheatre. That is quite impressive. You can't actually get to the stage. I want to walk on the stage. I want to. I want to test the projection, that's what this was designed for. This was designed for someone to stand down there and speak in a mask and be heard at the back here with no amplification, no microphones. It appeared Hieropolis would stay hiding in the mist. I mean, I understand we're looking through the mists of time, but this is ridiculous. Unfortunately, it was no better at the Cotton Castles. Not seeing the Cotton Castles was more of a blow to me. Like the fairy chimneys in Goreme, it had been the idea of seeing the cotton castles that had attracted me to Pamukkale. I want to see them without the mist and full of water. As I didn't have my cotton castles to look at, I went to the museum to take over Greg's job of talking about the history. Statue of an emperor. Apparently the only important part of an emperor is goddess of health. Well, losing her head is not very healthy. She's got shiny boobs and no head. 
As Felicity had taken my job, I decided to film some of her wildlife. It seemed we had played around for just long enough. The fog had lifted, and we could finally see and explore the cotton castles, which Greg seemed to be struggling with. It's really confusing, it's not snow. Even from here, I don't know how it looks on the camera, but even from here, from here, I feel like I should be able to walk over and pick up a ball of that and throw it at um, not me. anybody. We're having to do this barefoot because the number of people walking up and down here, they're trying to protect it from, well, people walking up and down it. No wonder he struggled to get his head around it. The cotton castles of Pamakale have been described by some as the eighth wonder of the world. Such unique set of circumstances had to line up for these travertines to be formed over a period of 15,000 years. The thermal water contains calcium bicarbonate. Over time this deposits, first as a jelly-like substance, then over time hardening to the limestone walls we see here today. Ooh, look at the power of the idea. It always amazes me how far you don't have to go to get away from it. Because that little walk we've just done up there, up just down those thermal baths, all of these okay. people behind us here, all the people right at the top, they could all be doing, they could all be doing the same thing, but they're not. They've stayed in one solid group at the top. There's a clump of people up there, and we've had the thermal baths with, well, a lot of them we've just been in by ourselves. That is beautiful. How come no one is in this one? Lady Felicity noticed a large number of people seemed to be using the pools just for posing. So I thought I'd try to become an Instagram sensation. Instagram So what we've discovered is we actually came right here and we stood up there on that bit of wood and we filmed the people here sitting with their feet in the water but you couldn't even see this far in the mist which means we missed the whole thing i am so glad that we decided to try again this afternoon all too soon the time came to head back down to the exit chef skis We're almost done. We wanted to visit a Greek ruin free of mist before we set off for Ephesus. We chose Laodicea, largely at random, and we got incredibly lucky. So this is an excavation underway. As they're doing excavation, there's a strange combination throughout the site of cranes, ancient architecture and then big structures to cover up the excavations. I have noticed something reading the information on this board and that is, and I don't want to be rude about the ancient people of this city, may not have been the cleverest because look, this is the devastating earthquakes in Laodicea's history. 27 BC, 47 AD, 60 AD, raised the city to the ground, they built it again. Earthquake during the reign of Antonio Pius, earthquake in the third century, earthquake again during the reign of Di uh, Diocletian, earthquake in 494, raised the city to the ground, earthquake during the reign of Valens, earthquake during the reign of Phocas, caused the abandonment of the city. I mean, all those earthquakes raised the city to the ground at least twice before they finally gave up and abandoned it. Then Greg revealed an interest I'd never seen before. Mosaics get me, that's just stunning. Artist design, every single one of those stones laid individually, all made to fit. Oh, well over a thousand years ago. And we're just looking at their patterns. One of the 
mosaic pieces. This really is the right time to visit a site like this, isn't it? Because they are, they're going to make this into another Hierapolis and it's going to be amazing and tourists are going to flock here to see it. But right now we are just looking around an excavation and this place we can't get to and we can't get into any excavations happening but that is what we are, we're in the middle of an excavation that's at work. I can't imagine being at Hieropolis 20, 30 years ago and seeing that in the same stage of this. This will, this, you come back here in 20 years time and it'll have all the museum kiosks and the shops. And we're here as they start to build that. Walking around the site at this stage felt like an honor. As we watched some of the archeologists reassembling a column, however, we were given a once in a lifetime opportunity. Okay, so I'm just going back over the rope out of the controlled area. This behind us is the excavation site and... They are so nice. They're so nice. We were not allowed to take the video camera in there. It's a working restoration. They're not allowed to have the video camera in, but you can see all the guys down there. These columns behind us, they've all been rebuilt the same way as the one that we saw them working on here. There are 10 archaeologists working this, or 10, a team of 10 archaeologists, conservationists, site leaders. We just met the head two, the head archaeologist and the head conservationist. They were trying to explain stuff. There's a language barrier. They're trying to explain to us how they work on it, really. But it's amazing to come to a site like this and to actually be allowed in, and even though we couldn't take the video camera in, to be allowed in and to just have a chance to have a look around. So it's incredible. To let us as well. They're lovely. I'm going to give you all a huge recommendation. Now we always kind of say there's places to go, places not to go. This uh, is a great one. This one is not just a place to go, but get yourself to Turkey now and While come it's here. Still like it. While it's still like this, sooner or later this is going to become a huge tourist attraction. It's going to be like Hierapolis. All of this work will be complete. They're going to do a great job. But get here now. You can hear the sound starting up behind me, the sound of excavation picking back up. This is, this is a historical site in the process of an archaeological excavation on a major scale. You are not going to get many opportunities to visit a site of this scale being excavated in its infancy. So if you're watching this video, if you're even vaguely considering having a trip to turkey now come now while the people that are doing it they're passionate about it they want to invite you in and explain it to you it's lovely to have that experience with them as well it's worth doing now it is a team of 10 working on this huge site jigsawing it together so behind us is the agora the big open space with these huge rows of columns running all the way around and let me tell you now I am never going to look at a column in the same way again you look at those columns up there and you see little cracks in them and you think oh well, they found a slightly cracked column and then we've seen the people trying not just to put it back together but to find all the pieces the I mean imagine you've just dropped one of your favorite porcelain statues and it's cracked and you've got like the little arm and a little hand and you're trying to stick them back together and get them just right. And they're trying to do this, but it's shattered into dozens of pieces. They've all gone under the couch. You don't even know if you've got half of them anymore. The dogs run off with a couple. And there's 10 people trying to do that with a city. They're so enthused by doing their little mosaic floor and everything in there. and. The time it must take them to dig it up, clean it off, then try and put it back together again. And they've got to do that, not for just one rich guy's church house, but for all of it. And how do they decide, well, today I'm going to go and work on the church. Another day I'm going to come and work on the, the theatre or the big open space. How do you... How do they decide which they're going to work on today when it's this big it's crazy, isn't it? they're essentially building a theater 
anytime they find something with writing on it or decorative patterns on it. I wonder if that's treasure hunting. All around the site, you get, like I've got behind me, just piles and piles of parts. And what it actually reminds me of most is either a Lego kit or an Airfix model where you've lost the instructions. Because you've got all these little pieces laid out and it's not a puzzle where you're just laying things flat down. All these different pieces have to fit together three-dimensionally and you've got to try and figure out what the entire three-dimensional object and some of the bits are broken. So you've got edges that won't quite match. It is like a full-scale Airfix Greek city. They have so much still to discover at Laodicea, but for us it was time to reluctantly move on. We set off for our final hotel of the adventure, where Felicity felt instantly at home. Flick has found her spiritual dragon home in Turkey. We made our way to the Temple of Artemis. So this is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, which I think is huge. And yet, these ruins don't feel at all cared for. It is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. You kind of feel it deserves better. It deserves to be looked after like, well, like all the other ruins we've seen here. Watchful of the guard cats, we made our way to St John's Basilica, a ruined church overlooked by a fortress. The fortress was lovely, but the visit was upsetting. And this is why so many of the places we've been to are not as great to look around anymore. Because even when they had the ropes in place, that guy just can't help himself. So now, because they've seen someone else do it, we've got other people crossing over the barriers. Things Just ask you not to climb on the top of the walls that they're desperately trying to Stop the damage. Stop damage too. It asks you to stay on the right side of little ropes because they got little ropes. They don't have to have big chains and gates. People Everyone actually just, kick it over out the way. People kicking over the ropes. And that's why we end up going to sites that are completely sealed off and have security guards. Our last ruins were a thesis with... Kittens! Are we stuck? This is mine. There's actually a Greek city here somewhere. Fine. Looks like a small theatre is essentially what it is. It's the Beleria. Would have been home to musical performances and things like that, but also this was the council chamber. So 2,000 years ago, people sat here and decided the rules, the future of the city. It just makes stuff even hugely important stuff like the um, Brexit debate that's going on at the moment. They were debating stuff like that on their own city over a thousand years ago and nowadays it's just an empty building and it's kind of meaningless. It's whatever, everything they decided, everything they agreed has just disappeared. First a Greek city, then modified by the Romans, which was for them a port town although it is now nearly 20 miles from the sea. Silt filling the harbour was actually one of the causes of the city's decline. Okay. Having made our way past more guard cats, we entered the covered terrace houses area of the site. Away from the big theatres, Colum de Gora and temples, this was where the people actually lived their lives. Even here, reconstruction was still underway. It's lucky that the rocks have their own natural patterns in so they can try and jigsaw them back together. You can see where the floor should be and it's gone. Looking out across the buildings, you could imagine a bustle of people here. And there were small personal signs like graffiti on the walls. These, alongside wall paintings and mosaics, were all signs of people just wanting to make their homes nice nearly two millennia ago. There was still life among the ruins now, though. She's lovely and soft. They are currently working to restore their theatre to only original pieces. What draws the cruise ships towards Ephesus, however, is the Selkus Library. The library was built, the person built it for his father, but it had to be squeezed in between existing buildings. So it was deliberately designed to look 
bigger and more ornate than it was from the front. <laughs> and the architect obviously did an amazing job because it's still being just looked at today for its ornate style. But he played around with the size of pillars and things to make it look, give us a sense of forced perspective, make it look bigger, make it look more impressive than it actually is. But this was it, a place of knowledge, a place of learning. We left the place of learning and just had to get past another street of cats before our drive to the airport. Coming to Turkey was on my bucket list. I wanted to see the fairy chimneys via hot air balloon and it was an experience like no other. I'd been a bit cautious about it and then when you're actually on the balloon, it's just so peaceful. You just glide along. The horse riding, we actually, we were both a bit shaky afterwards, but I'm so glad we did it. The views across the ferry chimneys at sunset, across the valleys, it was amazing. Garem, Cappadocia, everything there is worth doing. I mean, they've got something for everyone. Underground cities, which got my claustrophobia going, but were fascinating. Then we got over to Laodicea. It felt like history in motion. It felt like being there to actually be on a site where they are reassembling a temple is amazing. And I think I'm gonna to have to stop talking now because I'm about to go through a police security check. So Turkey, you've been absolutely amazing. I've got the travel bug and long may it continue. I drift, I'm a drifter, it is something that I do I never cared much for routine or discipline like you If you're born adrift, then drifting's what you're gonna do Some of us, we choose to drift a lifetime through Or do we choose how that's part of it? Decisions come and go Your rigid expectations, the only thing a drifter knows And all the things they said I could have done, I'll never get to do Cause I was born a drift, do you like drifting? Do you like drifting? I'm a bit like you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I drift, I'm a drifter, and it's really nothing new. I was the lesser spotted drifting bird way back when in school. Chase a new horizon. Face is strange and magic Some are filled with comedy And some are extra tragic Some are making no plans And they're the best at what they do I knew I was a drifter Without knowing how I knew Becoming a variety A multitude of shapes and sizes You're generally not driven By your money trophies prizes It's natural as breathing And it's my default saying too I was born a drift to you And here we have the Turkish mountain lion rampaging through the landscape.